Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. One of my fashion and sewing resolutions for 2021 was to start sewing my basics. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a pattern from some of your basics that you already love. I'm gonna be doing a set of pajamas, a very simple t-shirt and to a simple pair of pants. A simple t-shirt like this, it's just really easy to to do a knockoff of it and make your own pattern from it. Pants that I'm gonna do, they're also just a simple shape and they're super comfy and I love them. Both of these are getting a little bit tired and it's time for some new basics. I think it's a great opportunity for me to be able to show you how you can do a knockoff. It's great to start with something basic like a t-shirt or a pair of like easy pants like that because it's, it's just super easy to make your pattern from that and then you have it that you can use again and again. So today I'll show you how to do the knockoff and then in the next video I'll show you how to sew it up quickly. I'm going to be doing a couple variations in how to do a casing at the waist and um, a couple different necklines and even some lace edging. So that'll be fun. I want to give some credit to Alisa over at Thoughtful Creativity. She has a YouTube channel. She's absolutely lovely and I get some inspiration from her when I watch her. Two things that I want to give her credit for was inspiring me to sew my basics. I agreed with her when she said that it's great to sew your basics because that's what you're going to wear the most. And she also had a really great idea for drafting patterns. If you don't have big paper at home, this is what she uses, gift wrap. And I. I have this big tube that I've had for years and it drives me crazy every Christmas because it's taller than my awesome Rubbermaid gift wrap box that I keep everything in and so I haven't been able to put the lid on that for ages. So I thought, okay, perfect. This one has to get put to a different use. I'm going to be making patterns on this and I think that's really smart. So thank you so much to Elisa at Thoughtful Creativity. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. It would be great to have you along for some of my other sewing adventures. But right now, let's just jump right into that pattern. Okay, so I've got my table space cleared off. I've got my paper set to go. I like to use a ruler like this. This is called a see-through ruler, 18 inches by two inches. They're not expensive and they're easy to find. I think pretty much any fabric store would have those. That's kind of my go-to. This one, the curved ruler, this is my favorite. It's the very form curved ruler and it's, it's the best. It, unless you're getting serious about pattern drafting, you really don't need the curved rule, but I do highly recommend the see-through ruler for sure. And one more ruler that I do like to use is a metal meter stick or metal yard stick. Once in a while you just need a line that's longer than 18 inches, so I am going to start with that. And that's about all I need, so let's get going on doing the knockoff. Pretty easy, you'll like it. So tracing off a t-shirt is a great way to start to learn how to do a knockoff. But here's what it's not. So we're not just going to lay the t-shirt down flat and trace around it. It's a symmetrical garment, so we're going to fold it in half. Not only is it symmetrical, but it's three-dimensional. The extra fabric under the arm is really important in the shape that it creates around the body. So get it laying nice and flat in half and nicely evened up. I would normally use a pencil, but I want you to be able to see my line, so I'm going to use a Sharpie. But I don't recommend using a Sharpie because you might get it on the original garment and that would not come off. Good, so I'm just going to start with a straight line and then I'm going to push that center front edge up to that line. Good, so I'm going to let the sleeve bunch up in here for now. I'm not doing the sleeve yet. I'm just going to do the body. So I'm going to just start marking around the outside edge. And... I'm just going to put a little notch where that armhole is coming in and where it's coming back out. I don't know why in Canada we call it an armhole, but I hear a lot of Americans say arm sigh, and we just don't use that word here. At least I've never heard any Canadian say it. Now to get the armhole here, I'm going to just start by lifting up, just taking a little peek underneath and putting a dot where the seam is. And I'll go about halfway through here and then I'll start at the top and come down. Same way, just peeking underneath, putting a dot where the seam is. And if I, hopefully, I will end up in about the same place. Not too bad. So that's my armhole. Okay, the last thing I need is where the V at the front is gonna come to. I'm just gonna peek underneath here to trace that V, because it's not a straight line. It does have a bit of a curve to it. So that'll be fine. So there I've got the front and the back. I'm going to take my curved rule and lay that here. You see how that does give you a nice convenient curve? 
the front and back armholes are different sometimes and so I'd have to make sure yeah this t-shirt they're almost exactly the same so I'm not going to worry about the slight difference it's just not worth it for me to bother about that but if this was a more detailed garment then I definitely would take the time and care to make the front and back armholes accurate because they're not usually exactly the same at the top and bottom I want to make sure that I've got a right angle there because this is going to be on the fold I need right angles to have a straight line through there here I want to be so I don't have to worry about that I'm going to add seam allowance now so I'm switching colors I'm going to put this half inch line right along my edge and I'm going to put a half inch seam allowance all the way around and I'm going to trace wherever it's parallel and you just pivot your ruler as you go and then around the armhole too and I'm going to mark this as v-neck and then I'll make another line here for the t-shirt that's just going to have the round neck and then I'm just going to dot that in. Roughing it in with a dotted line works nicely. So this is going to be the back neck, this will be the round neck. T-shirt front and back, center on fold. So there's my somewhat messy but pretty accurate um, pattern piece for the body, the front and the back. But I want to be able to use this pattern again and again, so I don't want to cut off the neck that I might want to use another time. So what I'm going to do is layer it onto two other pieces of paper, staple it around, and cut it out so that I have it in those three different variations. I'll show you what I mean. I've got two more layers of the gift wrap. I'm going to staple it all the way around outside of my pattern line. So there it is, all stapled together. I'm going to cut out exactly on the outer line. And I'll cut on the back neckline here. So the bottom one can be the back, the second one I'll cut at the rounded neckline, and then the top one I'll just cut off at the V. I've got my two different fronts and a back, and now let's do the sleeve. I'm going to fold my paper this time, and put the fold of my sleeve right up against that. So I want this sleeve opened right up. You'll notice it comes back out, it flattens out here. A sleeve doesn't just dip down, you need that little bit of extra there, so flatten that right out. Trace here, trace that little line there. I put a tick up here, and now a tick there. Then I'm going to do my peeking underneath, go about halfway, and then come down the other half, and hopefully I end up in the same spot. So you can see the bottom here is not quite straight. It does have a gentle curve on it. And now I'm going to switch colors and do the seam allowance again. Again, I'm going to staple around the outside because I don't want this to shift around as I'm cutting the two layers. This fold line in the center can become my grain line. And this is t-shirt sleeve. Two versions are done of the t-shirt pattern, lickety split. And so now let's do the pants. Pants are three dimensional. And you see that the seam line is running right down that fold. But here, it's quite a big difference. And that's because the back of pants are always wider than the front of pants. Because for most of us, the back is wider than the front. So there always is that difference. It's also longer than the front in the rise. For a simple pant like this, that's really the only tricky part. We'll just have to keep those two things in mind as we trace off these pants. Without the elastic, that piece would be sitting about like that. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm tracing. And then same at the bottom, I have to keep that in mind that that would actually be wider. But it looks to me like that side seam is quite a straight line. So I'm going to start with a straight line. At the bottom here, this would want to come to there and at the top. This would want to come to there, plus I'll be adding the casing at the top here. So that's this whole side. So now I want to see where this would naturally lay if it wasn't elasticized in. So I'm stretching it out a bit, and then I'm going to let go of this side, but keep this one where I stretched it to. So that would sit about like this. So trace that top edge there and there. This is not my seam line over here, so I'm just going to put a dotted line there because I know that I've got that extra on the other side that's wrapping around. So this is just 
kind of a guideline, and there's my length. So now I'm going to trace off this curve in the same way and just peek under. Now I'm going to show you one other tool while we're here. This tool is called a pointed or a sharp tracing wheel. Actually in fashion school we called this the killer wheel and it's got these little needle-like points. Now I've had this one forever so a lot of the little points are broken off but it is really handy for tracing something like that. I'll slip a little omni mat underneath my paper here so I'm just going to killer wheel that line right there. That is a bit quicker than the peeking underneath method. And then I can see that line of little pinhole dots there that I can just do my dotted line over. The last thing I need from these is this little extra bit that has wrapped around. Just flip it over and make sure everything's lined up nicely. Flip that up and mark underneath where that seam is laying. You see what I'm doing? There's my seam. Picking up and just marking that extra bit. Again, there's nothing wrong with just filling in your dash line with more dashes. If you've got the tools of the trade, you might as well use them. So again, I'm going to add in my half inch seam allowance all the way around. So this is the back, so I want to mark that with a double notch. Two notches generally means back, single notch will mean front. I forgot to add the casing at the top. I want to add an extra, at least an extra inch and a quarter or three centimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna use a third color now to make the lines that would signify the front. And you can see how much shorter the rise is on the front as compared to the back. I'm letting this slip away from the side seam because I know it would stretch back out to there. This one would stretch over to there. And then either peeking underneath or using my killer wheel, I'm gonna trace this center front line. And I'm gonna also trace the top of this casing piece. So I'm gonna just mark that seam. I don't know if you can see, but the inseam comes right there. So I'm just gonna mark that on here. Okay, and then I can see that one's coming to there. And this is coming down just like that. So I want the side seams to match each other, right? So I want to start at the same place that I'm starting here. I need to add the seam allowance onto that front piece. And then an inch and a quarter to the top. And I'm going to mark this with a single notch. I'm also going to put a single notch on the side seam right about in the middle. I'm gonna go 13 inches, 33 centimeters from the bottom. I'll put a notch there. And same 13 inches, 33 centimeters from the bottom. I'll put a notch there. There might be some easing and stretching that goes on in this section of the inseam. The bottom of the inseam should match up nicely. Good, so I'm gonna cut roughly around them. I'm gonna staple around and use the same trick again. So now once again, I'm gonna cut out the bigger one first. But this time I just have a little bit right there to see where the front extends out past the back. So I just got to watch out for that. So I'm going to cut around that little bit that extends out. And I can't forget to mark my notches. Now, if you don't have a sharp tracing wheel, like you can just use a pin and just poke a bunch of holes with a pin. That works just fine. And I'll just mark that little straight line where I'll be chopping that off. This double notch here. And this single notch on the inseam. Good. So now this one is the back. So I'm just cutting off that little extension that we only needed on the front. I'll mark the double notch here, single notch on the inseam, single notch on the side seam, and this is the back. And we want to cut two, and then we want a grain line. To get a grain line, I basically want it running down the center of the leg. I'm going to fold this in half, match up the bottom corner, and match up the top for two. And that's a pretty quick and easy way to do a grain line. So there's the back all done. And then I just have to clean up the front by cutting off all the messy stuff. And then there's a grain line. So this is front cut two. Two more things that I need to do to my pattern. One is to make a, 
a cuff pattern for the bottom of the pant. And I think that one of the sets I'm going to make, I'm actually just going to do little shorts. So I'm going to put on the front and back just a line of where I'm going to cut for the shorts. So first of all, the cuff. To trace this cuff pattern, I want to double it this way and double it this way, and then add seam allowance around. So I'm going to go 10 by 4. And this is leg cuff. Cut 2. I definitely want to have the grain line going this way, the direction of stretch going that way because it has to stretch around the ankle. Pants are done. I just want to draw a line for where I would cut shorts. I'm going to line this up with my casing line there and I'm going to draw at the bottom of the short and then I just want to see where the inseam comes to. My inseam would come to there. Especially on the front, you often get this curved shape because you do want right angles on both seams. Right. If I had just gone straight across, it would be too short in the inseam. And then I will just transfer those. I can just see through the paper. I should probably make that into its own pattern piece. So the pattern's all done and neatly organized. So join me for my next video where I'm going to show you how to cut that out and how to sew it up. I'll see you right back here next time. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.